Hi, I'm Kim. You're watching Kim Wilson TV. My channel is dedicated to helping victims of narcissistic abuse get free and stay free. Before I get going with this video, I just want to take a moment to thank my friend Susan very much for your continued support. I really appreciate your donation to our channel's PayPal account. Your donations to our channel's PayPal account keep the channel going and keep the channel growing. Thank you, guys. Okay, admittedly, initially I was fueled by blind ambition. I believed that I could crack the code to healing. I believed that if I just looked long enough, if I dug deep enough, I'd find the magic pill, all the puzzle pieces to put the whole picture together. I was absolutely convinced and determined that I could find the fast track to healing, not just for myself, but for all of us. And I'll tell you, it's proven to be... A little more complicated than that. In fact, it's a gravely perplexing situation. I do believe I have found some more puzzle pieces, and I want to talk about that today. Now, I think we all agree that terminating a relationship with a narcissist, whether they discarded you or you discarded them or you fled with the shirt on your back or you left in a organized way with your things, none of that matters. In the end, pretty much all of us end up feeling the same way. Now, I do believe that that initial sting is really the result of all the gaslighting, all the mind fuckery, and the horrendous state of confusion that we're in. Now, when a normal relationship between two human beings end, yes, you may have heartache. Yes, you may, you know, be experiencing a feeling of loss and grief, but it's not like this with a narcissist. It's uh, all consuming. It's all encompassing. It's soul wrenching. And you're so confused, so disorientated. It's really hard to get your head around it. Plus, many of us have been confronted with the very real possibility that we weren't dealing with a human being at all. Now, a lot of people are going to say, you need to get over it because the narc doesn't exist. The narc isn't real. And that's true. The narc is a mirrored image of you. The narc does not really exist. The narc has presented a false self, a reflection of you back at you. And that is truly what we fall in love with. The narc has no personality or character traits to fall in love with. They've mirrored every one of their victims. Every member of the narc harem was mirrored. So everybody knows a different narc. Uh, for example, Trevor had, I think, seven identifiable members of the narc harem. And I'll assure you, each and every one of us knew a different man. It seems that absolutely everything about the relationship with the narc is a contradiction. Uh, everything, including the statement, the narc isn't real. Okay, the narc isn't real. You could say that to yourself over and over again. You could say that a million fucking times a day. But guess what? The narc was real to me. I lived with a real man. I woke up beside a real man. Now, try and get your head around that, right? Is the narc real or not? Okay, so yeah, there was somebody there, but it wasn't who I thought they were. In fact, they don't exist at all, yet I was madly in love with them. I mean, do you see the mindfuckery in all of this? I just want one plus one to equal two. That's all I want. And none of this adds up right. None of it. Not from the narc's behaviors, to the departure, to how I felt, to how you guys are feeling, to how some victims struggle to heal for 20 years. This shit just doesn't add up. I feel like it'd be pretty easy to jump right into what I think some of the most effective ways to heal are, but I think we need to first discuss what we're healing from. We did not terminate a normal relationship, whether you were discarded or you discarded the narc. Uh, you didn't leave the relationship. In fact, I've never heard anyone say, I left the relationship. Uh, people say exactly what I say. I fled, ran for my life, couldn't get out of there fast enough, would have left with the shirt on my back to get out, would have gnawed off my arm to get out. I mean, being chased by Satan, barely got out alive. I mean, this sort of thing. So I think if we go to the beginning, we can really take a look at healing from the perspective of 
What the fuck are we healing from? Now, a victim gets out of a relationship with a narc, and regardless of how you got out, you are rocked. I mean, you are sick. You are in a state of utter confusion and mindfuckery. You are physically ill, if not seriously, as many people are certainly rocked to your core. People have uh, difficulty sleeping. People are waking up through the night in sweats and night terrors, having horrible nightmares. People become incapacitated, often unable to function normally or work. People's careers are destroyed. They have been isolated and have lost their entire support network in many cases. This is not like leaving a normal relationship. Victims have been disillusioned, they've been deceived, they've been lied to, they've been cheated on, they've been robbed, they've been raped, they've been brutalized, in many cases physically harmed. Victims have been harmed by someone they were truly in love with, someone they believed to be their twin flame, their soulmate, harmed emotionally, mentally, psychologically, physically, financially. It, oh, it's a train wreck. For victims who are able to maintain a job, many of them claim that they go straight home to bed and sit in their bed and drink. Now, I did this too. Uh, not the last time, because the last time I left, damn it, I was done. But throughout the five years, I had left many times. Uh, every one of the estimated seven that statistics will say a victim will leave. So I had definitely been in that revolving door. Now, many times I would leave, and that's exactly what I would do. I'd go to work during the day, I'd come home at night, I'd get into my pajamas, I would sit in my bed, I would cry, and I would drink red wine. And for those of us that didn't hit the red wine a little too hard, I know many of you are on antidepressants, antipsychotics, and a battery of medications. Dumped, discarded, and replaced. When you replaced, well, fuck, you replaced the same day. Not so much as a thank you. No recognition whatsoever for the sacrifice that you have made. No validation, no apology, just replaced. I was replaced like I never existed, and not over time. I was replaced day one. Of that, I'm 100% certain. New woman sleeping in my bed, new woman using my towels in the bathroom, new woman using my pots in the kitchen. Yeah, like just like that. Wham! See you later, Kim. Who the fuck is Kim? Like, Kim was never there. Now, here at the channel, we have literally seen thousands of victims get free, get the courage to leave, move on, get the fuck out of there. And yes, it is a celebratory situation. I mean, so many of you leave comments saying, wow, I just got out. I've been out, you know, no contact for a month, six months, a year. Yes, this is cause for celebration. It certainly is. And who wouldn't be happy to see victims getting out of a shit show like that? But unfortunately, there's still a really rough road ahead. And I do know that while we celebrate so many victims getting free, there's still a lot of friends in a very, very bad situation today. A lot of friends truly stuck. But I guess I'm still a little bit naive in my belief that I am going to find the magic pill. And damn it, I'm going to. And every last one of you are going to get out. If you're stuck today, your turn's going to come. Don't worry. Just keep reading those comments and say, I'm out and I'm free. And you'll be making a comment like that soon. Now, this video on healing is going to be multiple parts because this is kind of a big subject. So I'm going to skip on to the next part and I'll see you guys in a minute. I'm Kim. You're watching Kim Wilson TV. I hope you're having a great NARC-free day.